Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 63 of the C-Suite Show, featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week, we're excited to have as our special guests, well-known leading experts and influencers, Joe Peterson of Clarify360 and Charles Johnson of Alert Logic. Joe Peterson is the Vice President of Cloud Services for Clarify360, which focuses on cloud enablement and security. Joe is the founding co-chair of Cloud Girls, which has since been awarded by CRN, Woman of the Channel recipient for the last three years. She is ranked as the top 100 cloud influencer by Rise Global, a top 100 key influencer in IoT by Global Data, and a top woman in cybersecurity by Cybercrime Magazine. And in 2019, Joe was named a channel influencer by Informa. Joe is followed by an audience of over 40,000 on Twitter. And we're also pleased to have on the show Charles Johnson, who is the Vice President of Alert Logic, which is focused on ensuring the organizations are enabled to protect their data and infrastructure from malicious activity. Charles began his career in InfoSec, securing communications for the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Joint Communications in the United States Navy. Hi, Joe and Charles. It's great to have you both on the C-Suite show this week. Thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. Oh, happy to be here. Yeah, it's really great having you both here. Really appreciate your time. And Dave, obviously a pleasure to have you back on the C-Suite show, sir. Always a pleasure. It's great having uh, Joe and Charles here. Looking forward to a great conversation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So look, in this week's show, uh, we're talking about cloud security and the C-level executives. So, I mean, look, an opening question then over straight over to you then, Joe, is what is your working definition of cloud security for 2019? I think cloud security is control-based safeguards and technology protection that's designed to protect the resources that are stored online and on-prem, because hybrid is a thing, right? It's a real thing, from leakage, theft, or data loss. I, I think that's just a simple answer. Yep. Okay. Right. And uh, that's a great answer, and it really is, uh, it really is as simple as that, isn't it, really? Uh, and what are your thoughts on that, Charles? Uh, so... I'm going to leave Joe's answer alone, and, I, and I'll just say that usually when somebody asks me about cloud security, um, it's usually because security is new to them, and, and they don't understand how to actually make it work. So we know that we need to figure out a way to make it easier for them to understand cloud and that new platform. So I, I gotta, I'm going to jump in here. I got a question for Joe, and then I guess we'll go to Charles as well. So has the challenge become one of balance, balancing the organization's need for agility while improving the security? applications and securing the data as it moves between various clouds? I think it's so layered. I mean, I, I think that more and more it's a business conversation, right? Because poor security affects brand. And so the challenge is how to communicate, how does IT communicate that risk comprehensively to the CEO, the CFO, and the board so that they understand it. I think what happens is we understand it, we're excited about it, we're passionate about it, we all want to do the right thing. And then we go to our leadership and we talk in bits and bytes and we confuse them, right? We don't talk to them about risk and we don't talk to them about losing money and we don't talk to them about, about loss of brand and things that means something to them. So the conversation gets diluted. That's what I think. Charles, what's your take on that? You know, I, I do think that the, the need for agility is driving a lot of the activity in IT moving forward, whether it's in the cloud or, or on premise. Uh, what, what I will say is that I think that our board members in our C-suite is, is becoming way more educated than we give them credit for. And mm -hmm. they really do understand the risk. And now what we need to be able to do is entrust those that we've entrusted in the past uh, with with our technology to drive us forward in a way that supports the business. The, the way that I've seen them do that is actually make this more of a turnkey initiative. So I'll consult, um, you know, with somebody who, who will build out my brand on a platform and they deliver it to my IT team turnkey so it's easy for them to manage moving forward. They don't need to worry about that. And that really speaks to the agility, the need for agility as, as we pick on these new initiatives and leverage the cloud to do so. 
So, Joe, you struck on something I thought was interesting. So we, we, we need to start stop talking about things in bits and bytes and, you know, start, start putting into a business perspective. And I, I do think that's where uh, IC falls down in communicating upward and, in essence, trying to, um, you know, talk to boards of directors and CEOs and CT, even CTOs and CIOs and, you know, getting them to understand. So how should we approach those kinds of communications? And, you know, what are we doing wrong now and what needs to be corrected? You know, I go back to, I used, I used to think that when we were trying to sell DR back in the day, right, and I'm dating myself here, we had business metrics that we would assign to loss of revenue. We used to talk about things like RTO and RPO, and we all had a common language that we shared. And so we made it a business conversation. We don't make security a business conversation nearly enough, right? We don't think about ways to, I had a brilliant experience. I got to chat with the CISO of Unisys, Matt Newfield, and he talked about how they had actually created metrics, KPIs and metrics around you know, security revenue spent and and money lost, and that they had levels that they'd created in this metrics um, for the board. And so everybody knew that a level one dash five, you know, um, was a bad thing going on. Everybody understood that as a common language. We haven't created a common language that aligns revenue with security. And that's where we start. Yeah, well, I think it comes down to the fact that we have to, are we, uh, and this is probably a question for Charles, are we assessing the lack of security in terms of what breaches cost? Are we assessing the lack of productivity? Are we assessing all of the above? Or, you know, how are we having the business, you know, risk the business, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, the ROI conversation ultimately around security is for you, Charles. Yeah, the ROI conversation is really going to boil down to, I think, one of two things. What's most important to generating revenue uh, for that company and then what inhibits uh, that revenue generating activity? So anything for brand, is, as Joe was talking about, to making sure that you're protecting data, which could be the crown jewels. You got to make sure that you're, you're able to put metrics on your ability to do so and, and show performance uh, therein. So I really like the idea of putting it in, you know, measurable objectives. Uh, and, and then when you're speaking to risk, you have to do the same thing there as well. It's not enough to say that this is vulnerable, this configuration is vulnerable. How likely is it that we're going to be breached? What's the ratio that I'm going to be breached versus not being breached because I have this configuration or this string of code in place? When we start putting things in, in, the, in that sort of uh, perspective, it makes it really easy to make the decisions all across the board. Yeah, so going forward, you know, and this is a question for you, Joe. I mean, um, is this uh, a, a template? Is this a, uh, you know, something where we can, re, um, you know, use something that's repeatable from business to business? Or is this going to be a one-off ROI conversation that has to be customized for a particular, uh, particular business? This is going to be one of those dreaded answers from consultants. It depends. <laughs> No, I think you could do something basic, right? I, I think that, you know, every business is going to be different. Every business's loss of potential revenue is going to be different, right? So if you're an online company where your revenue is generated online, boy, this better be important to you, right? You better figure this out fast. But if you're in maybe a more traditional vertical like manufacturing or something of that nature, don't have a lot of regulatory constraint, maybe you're, you're only... 20% of your workloads are in the cloud. Maybe it's not as important to you, right? But boy, if I was sitting as the CISO of a, an online business, I would surely come up with a set of metrics right away. So I guess this is a question for uh, for Charles. Um, you know, where can we find those metrics? And, you know, what are the resources out there that we should be looking for in terms of how cloud security should be implemented and, you know, ways that we can approach explaining ROI to the C-levels? Well, it's not a book that you wrote, and, and I read one or two, so it's pretty good. But I, I would say that the best book that I've seen that articulates this um, is How to Measure Anything in Cybersecurity. Uh, it's, it's a follow-on book from How to Measure Anything, and it really speaks to how to tease out uh, really good KPIs out of, out of you know, business data. And the second version of that really digs into business. The best part of that book is it actually comes with 
a, a, a suite of, of tools that help you build the blocks of how to generate the data and get reporting out for your organization. And I think that's a really good tool for a CISO to start off with if he doesn't have anything to work with from scratch. What about you, Joe? Any any uh, pointers from you as far as where we can find information? And you know, is it is it really going to be the it depends answer for all this stuff? No, I I don't think it's it's the it depends answer. I think your job is on the line is the answer, right? I think <laughs> you better make this a priority. You better make this a priority. You better do something to show tangible value. You are working hard, you know, as a CISO. You are killing it every day you're, you're you're keeping the lights on you're doing everything you need to do but are you really thinking about where the money's going to come from because i hear people say things like oh security is important but then the budget gets slashed and guess where it gets slashed it gets slashed around security so how are you going to convince the executives not to slash your budget you better speak to them in a language that they can understand so this question for both of you, I mean, are we uh, still going to enter an age where, um, you know, when the breaches occur and these things are on national news and the morning news shows now and, um, you know, who's going to get blamed? Is it going to be the CEO? Is it going to be CFO for cutting the budget? The CIO for, you know, not screaming loud enough? The CISO, if they have one, not everybody has a CISO. CTO or, you know, who's going to get tossed under the bus? Oh, there's always got to be a sacrificial lamb. If there's a bad day on Wall Street, we're we're nixing somebody there also, right? Uh, I, I don't think uh, I don't think it's necessarily a fair question, but I think at the end of the day, somebody needs to be responsible, and that really should be the CEO. I, I, the CEO is going to set the tone for how we operate and how we govern, and and if we have uh, you know a magnitude breach that looks something like Equifax. Um, I, I don't blame the CISO for that, that you're talking about years of culture and, 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 and you know, I would offer that they're probably a really good team of, of the teams that I've seen, you know, across the board here in the U.S., probably one of the best teams I've ever seen. So to, to blame somebody in a department for something that that's probably a board level decision, I think is a miss, uh, you know, a miss. You really need to make sure that you're taking responsibility where the buck stops. And for me, that's the CEO. Yeah, I think that's where that's what uh, where the buck stops. Unfortunately, they they have a tendency to blame downward. Uh, what do you what's your take on this, Brad? Well, my take on it is that we're we're running exceptionally out of time. But I do agree with what Charles said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, look, you know what Charles said. You know, at the end of the day, it's a cultural thing. If it's not seen from a, a top level management point of view, then obviously there's some there's there's some real um, problems there. For the, for the whole organization and you can't just start blaming individuals to save your own lifeline i don't think it works like that i think people if you're going to be in that position you have to be accountable um, you know accountable for your decisions historically not just you know a decision when you know the the shit hits the fan uh, technical term but yeah no i think it's been a great show i've thoroughly enjoyed it i'm sorry i'm gonna to have to close off the c-suite show now because i know david's pushed for time today so i want to try and squeeze in the training show if we can um, but it's been absolutely fabulous charles great guest thank you so much for your time today thank you thank you and joe it's great having you on the c-suite show look forward to the training show thanks dave always a pleasure as always sir. yeah it's great having charles and joe on the on the uh on the show and look to get them back soon yeah, absolutely. You can get all of us on Twitter as well. So I'm not going to go into the Twitter handles. We did that in the Australia show. So you can go back to that and, and watch that. They'll be on the screen now anyway, as you can write those down or get onto Twitter, obviously. Uh, the links will all be in the description box below. So check those out with our blogs and everything like that. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. And until next week, thanks for watching.